In this video, you are going to learn the 30 proven ways to instantly improve your skills at Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout. Welcome to the channel. This is More Skills TV, and if you're excited to learn the 30 best tips and tricks of Fall Guys, then you're going to be blown away when we get to number 30. It's a secret trick I use to win a DoorDash with a flawless first place victory, and it's going to blow your mind. Number one, the last three squares in tiptoe will always be connected. It's a straight road to the finish. As you can see, everyone was worried about crossing them, but I jumped right onto the platform because I knew I would be safe and they would not disappear. Number two, to ensure your best chances of finishing, you're gonna wanna play it safe at the beginning and let everyone else do the guesswork for you. Number three, the last three rows will shake if they aren't correct, so you can actually predict where the finish is going to be just by looking to see which ones are shaking in the last three rows, because remember, the last three squares are a straight shot to the finish. And if you thought those were some great tips, just wait until we get to number 30, because it's the most mind-blowing of them all. Number four, in Hit Parade, instead of trying to hop onto the blue and yellow things, I just like to dive right into the purple slime. In my opinion, this way is just as fast as trying to cross the yellow and blue things. Number five, when you approach the doors, try not to be the first one there and let the other contestants push through and do the work for you. Just walk through them all as if they are doing the work. Number six, once you get to the wrecking balls and the slimy conveyor belt, pick one side and stay there. It doesn't matter which side, as long as you keep to your side. Doing this will significantly decrease your chances of being hit by a moving object. It's still possible to be hit though, but the odds are very, very low. Number seven, in dizzy heights, go with the current and not against it for a flawless run and decrease your chances of falling behind. This takes a little self-awareness, but once you start working with the current and not against it, you aren't gonna have any problems with this level. Number eight, hug the rail and dive under the balls. If you time your dive right, you can actually duck under the balls. Typically, I like to stay near the padded blocks and use it as a shield in case if I were to get hit, then I know that I'm not going to tumble down back to where I started. Number nine, once you get past the balls, the right route is a little faster than the left route because the very last spinning disc spins in the direction that would be working towards you. So it's always best to go to the right way if you can. And once you get past the very last disc, it's all about working with the platforms to dodge the balls and cross the finish line. Number 10, in seesaw, understand how a seesaw works and the mechanics of a seesaw to ensure your chances of not falling. I tend to gravitate towards the middle of the seesaw because the middle of the seesaw is always going to be the most balanced area of the seesaw. Number 11, if the seesaw is tilted and you jump, you'll stumble. So try to be cautious and only jump when it's necessary. Think before you jump to ensure you get your timing right to make the jump. If you act too fast without really thinking before you jump to the next one, you could fall. And if that happens, you'll be less ahead of the contestants than you would be if you would have just thought a little before you made your jump. This may sound like common sense, but you'd be surprised how many more times I would have qualified if I'd just been a little less careless and actually waited until I knew I could make the jump across. Number 12, try not to fall behind. Chances are if you think before you jump, you won't fall as much, so you probably won't fall behind. But if you ever do happen to fall behind, you may encounter a predicament kind of like this one right here, where everyone is just standing around because the seesaw is super high on one side, making it nearly impossible to get on. So you kind of have no choice but to wait. Number 13, in tail grab, turn on usernames when playing to see other contestants. You could even see where they're hiding if they happen to hide. Sometimes people will run around this little area with their tail, but you can't really see them unless you have usernames turned on. Number 14, server desync. Basically what a server desync means is that it may look like people are grabbing your tail from far away when in reality they could be close to you and around you, so just be aware of this. Number 15, understand that it doesn't matter how long you've had the tail, but only if you have it in the very, very end. 
Sometimes I'll wait until the very last second to grab someone's tail. They probably really dislike me for doing that. I just imagine how mad they probably are. Number 16. In rollout, the safest trick I've found is to go back and forth on two platforms. This might be a boring way to play, but it's the easiest way to win. I typically don't leave the blue and pink platforms, and like I said, just go back and forth. Play around with the camera angle too as you cross the platform so that you can clearly see the next best move. Number 17. Avoid large crowds of people. It seems like whenever I have a losing moment, it's generally because a large crowd was in my way and I couldn't get back to the platform I was supposed to be on. So avoid large crowds at all costs and other people in general. Yes, hot dog, I'm talking to you. Number 18. Don't jump. If you follow the other two tips I laid out for rollout, you shouldn't ever really need to jump because jumping usually makes you unbalanced which could cause you to fall off the platform. Number 19, in Gate Crusher, it's all about timing to get through. I typically like to go for the doors that I see are closed because by the time I get there, they will be open. So always go for the closed doors. Number 20, when you arrive to the third and fourth row, the doors on the left and right stay closed longer than the doors in the center. So it's always just best just to go for the center ones when you get near those doors. Number 21, go for the closed door to finish. When you arrive near the finish, it's best to go for the door that is closed because by the time you get there, it will be open. It's the same concept from earlier in the game. Number 22, in perfect match, stay near one area of the mini game. This will make it so much easier for you to remember the fruits that were around you. Number 23, say the fruits in your head. Say the fruits in your head or repeat them to yourself out loud to remember them so much easier. Number 24. Look at the group if you aren't sure. If you happen to forget or maybe you just weren't paying attention, then see where most of the group is and go over to the group. 9 times out of 10 it's going to be the right one. Number 25. In Whirly Gig, use the ramp as a speed boost. You can save a decent amount of time by using the ramp as a speed boost to dive onto the platform. Make sure to jump right before your feet touch the purple padding so you get the boost. See how I made it and the other guy didn't? It's because he jumped a little too late and didn't get the speed boost from the yellow ramp by hitting the purple. I jumped for the purple so I made it through. Number 26, dive under the propeller three bars away for a perfect dive. So you have to time this one just right for it to work like the others. And so to ensure your chance of diving through successfully, try to dive while you're at least three bars away from the propeller. This will make your character slide onto the platform while lying down and out of harm's way. And since you're lying down on the platform, essentially the, the propeller can't touch you, so you'll make it through every single time. Number 27, use the spinners to work with you. Now this is a little advanced, but you can actually leverage the spinners to launch you in the direction you want to go. You can really get fancy with this if you want, it looks really cool. Number 28, in DoorDash, keep an eye on the other contestants. In my opinion, it's best to not be the first one to run through the doors during the beginning because you can see where the other contestants are going through the wrong doors, so you'll know not to go through the doors that they've already tried. This only applies in the beginning though. Number 29, jump and dive over dog piles. If you ever encounter a dog pile like this one right here, you can jump and dive over it to get past it much, much faster and much easier. Number 30, the trick to the last three doors. As you can see, on the last three doors, the triangles at the very, very bottom are not the same, and the smallest triangle at the bottom is the real door, so always pay attention to the bottom triangles for the last three doors. Knowing this, you can push the last three doors every single time and get it correct. It also shows you this during the beginning, during the preview, but if you happen to forget while playing, it's still fairly easy to tell as you're approaching the last three doors. Subscribe and turn on post notifications so you don't miss any more videos helping you with Fall Guys Ultimate Knockout and more gaming videos. Do you love to laugh? Then check out this video of my first time playing Fall Guys and see how bad I used to suck before I implemented these methods. You'll literally LMAO. Peace.